All right, guys, so let's get started with the foundation course. What are you going to be learning in the foundation course is the stock market lingos. We're going to talk about types of trading styles that fit that might be good for you, uh, what brokers to use depending on your trading styles. Then we're going to go to the important trading rules that you must follow. You know, there's some universal rules that everybody should be following. Um, then we're going to talk about the common mistakes that traders make. So if you're new or if you're a developing trader, make sure you don't do these mistakes at least. And then lastly, we're going to talk about the habits of successful traders, what they actually do and what has helped them to become profitable and very, very rich. All right. So let's get into it. So before we get started, I want you to, uh, I'm going to be talking about, you know, this is basically the pillars of trading. Okay. Like that's what I call the thing that you want to know in order to have everything right down and become a pro at it. So the number one thing is that you need to obviously understand the basics of the stock market, which we can, which is this course is about understand the basics. Then uh, we comes to fundamental analysis, which is the least important in my opinion, especially if you're swing trading or day trading. If you are like an active trader, fundamental analysis is not something very, very important. The most important is, I believe, is technical analysis. So we're going to talk about, we have a complete detailed chapter on technical analysis we're going to be going through. So the most important, I believe, is one of the, one of the important pillars of trading is technical analysis. Then with technical analysis comes with risk management. So what do you do when you're wrong? How, what do you do when you're right? You know, how to take profits, how to cut losses quick and stuff like that. So that comes in risk management. And then comes trading psychology. So even if you understand everything, you know, basics, uh, technical analysis, risk management, fundamentals, you are a pro at it. But if you cannot get your trading psychology, which is emotions in check, it's just you're not going to be able to make it. This is the most important part. The biggest and the biggest traders have failed because just because they couldn't get their trading psychology checked. Okay. And then once you have all of these pillars set, that's how you create your trading strategy. Once you understand everything on the basis of that, you build your own trading strategy. I'm going to share my trading strategies, you know, but every person that's why trading is just so beautiful, right? Every person has their own trading strategy. It works for them own. It's because how they understand fundamental analysis, how they understand technical analysis, how they understand risk management, how they understand psychology based on their own personal experience, they build their own trading strategy. That's why what something might work for me, not might work for you. However, my goal of this course is that to get you all the information that you need to know to build your own trading strategy. That's what it is. Okay. I'm obviously trying to talk about all the strategies that work, but you're going to be picking up your favorite strategy and then work the way around it. All right, so now that we understand the pillars, let's get started. Uh, let's, the first thing we're going to talk about is the lingo of the stock market. Let's get into the basics and let's dive in, into it quick. So the number one thing is the lingo of the stock market. So what is 10K filing? A 10K filing is basically a comprehensive report of a company's annual performance filed at the end of the fiscal year. So every year at the end, you know, a company files a filing. With a, it's called 10K filing where they talk about their companies, their structure, their equity earnings, you know, basically their financial statement. Okay. Then it's the 10Q filing. A 10Q filing is basically the same report, but it comes out quarterly. So every four months, they come out with their um, you know, structure of their company, the equity and their earnings, and that's called 10Q filing, which is also called you know earnings report, right? Quarterly earnings report. Then we have 8K filing. The company reports 8K filing, filing and basically it's a report um, that it's a report detailing an important material and scheduled corporate events. Right. AK filings could include information regarding acquisitions, major contracts, addition or resignation of directors. So when that 8K filing comes in, there's probably, you know, a news, a merger or like something's going on that normally pushes the price stock price up or down. So you want to understand, hey, you know, what is what is in the 8K filing that helps you understand, hey, what's going to happen to the uh, price of the stock in the near future. Next is after market hours. So basically an after market hours is just a, basically a time from 4 p.m. EST to 8 p.m. EST when the trading can take place after the market's officially closed. Not all the brokers allow you to do after market trading. And normally the after market trading is something the, the volume or, you know, the shares being traded are very, very low. So the price of the stock, price of the market or the price of the shares is actually kind of very, very erratic. Okay. So uh, I, I don't suggest 
uh, you know, after market hours trading, but the prices do move uh, once the market is closed still. Okay, we're going to go more into detail later, but that's what aftermarket is. Then we have authorized shares. Authorized shares are basically the maximum number of shares a company is legally allowed to issue. You know, so if the company, for example, Apple is allowed to issue 10 million shares. So this means there are going to be 10 million shares in the market and that's the authorized shares of Apple, 10 million. Next is average down. So average down is basically, you know, adding to an existing position. So let's say if you have 100 shares of uh, Apple at $100. The stock goes down to 90, so you buy another 100 uh, at 90, then the stock goes to 80, then you buy another 100. So you're averaging down into the stock price. What is average up? Basically just the opposite, you know, so the, let's say the stock market prices, you bought something, uh, Apple at $10, oh, I'm sorry, the Apple at $100, the stock goes up to 110, you bought more shares. Then it goes to 120, you buy more shares. You're basically averaging up, all right? Next we have is bearish. So bearish is basically if you believe that something is going to go down, you're bearish on it. Let's say the price of Tesla is 800 bucks and you think the stock's going to go down to 700. Is that what you think? So you have, you are thinking this Tesla is bearish, okay? Bullish is the opposite. If you think Tesla is 800 and you think it's going to go down to, you know, go up to $1,000, you are bullish on the stock. Anything with the bull on it, means the stock price is going to go up. Anything with the bear on it means the stock market is going to go down. It's pretty common. I know most of you guys know, but uh, these are the bases that everybody, maybe there are some people who don't understand. So we're going to talk about this. Then it's bull market. So if something is going up a lot, you know, if the market has been going up for a very long time, it's called the bull market. It's the opposite. If something market is going down for a long time, you know, for more than three to four weeks or a month, it's uh, typically a bear market. Okay. Then is next is a breakout. A breakout, what a breakout is called is basically a definite upward price movement through a resistance level. So for example, let's say that the price of Apple, every time it comes to 100, it goes down. It comes to 100, it goes down to 90. Then it comes to 100, it goes down to 90. So basically $100 is a resistance level. There will be one day or there's, let's say there's a day when the stock breaks out above that $100 level, which was previously a resistance because it had a hard time going above that $100 price. That is called a breakout, okay? Next is blue chip stocks. So a blue chip stocks, basically when you call blue chip stocks, uh, basically a company that is very, very uh, big, uh, of a large, well-established, financially sound companies that hold a record of consistently increasing the rate of their paying dividends over the decades to its stockholders. A blue chip stocks typically have a market capitalization in billions and tend to be one of the leading companies in the sector. So for example, a leading company in sector in tech sector would be Microsoft, right? Google, you know, Alphabet, um, Apple, right? These are leading blue chip company stocks. Um, those are typically safer than the other, uh, you know, other cheaper stocks or not the cheaper, I would say, but other uh, stocks that are new companies that have not been in the market for a very long time. But the blue chip stocks are normally, if you wanna, uh, basically a blue chip stock is, you know, a company that is very sound and very, very good, okay? Next is gap down. So when a stock opens up uh, for a trade below a closing price of the previous day, it's a gap down. Uh, for example, a price goes up Let's say that you were you had you were own a stock which is worth ten dollars. You wake up the next day and it's at seven. Maybe because of some bad news, the market hasn't been opened yet and it's at seven dollars. Okay, that's a gap down. So mark the stock gap down before the market even opened. And the opposite would be gap up. So you have you let's say you own a stock at ten bucks and you wake up and it's like fifteen. You're like oh my god I'm up fifty percent without even doing anything and basically that's just a gap up, all right? Next is initial public offering, so IPO. So the first day when the stock, uh, you know, shares of a company comes into the market to be trading, that's an IPO, that's the first day, it's called initial public offering. The first day that the uh, stock of that particular company is being traded, okay? It's very simple. Level two, so level two is basically a window providing traders the price with price depth. 
A level two displays all available orders and price codes from market makers, including price, order size, and the time in which the order was placed. So let me just show you a real quick um, order. All right, so this is level two. So level two, if you look here, level two is basically, let's just make it bigger and let's talk about level two. So this is level two. The level two is basically says, says, hey, how many people want to buy this stock at 1050? So one lot, three lot, two lots, and what are the sellers? So it basically tells you, hey, where are the sellers are willing to sell and where the buyers are willing to buy the stock at what price, okay? Long or going long. So basically, if you're buying a stair, buying a, buying shares of secure, buying shares, and you think it's going to go up, you think you are long. That's all called basically. If I want to say, hey, I'm buying something, right? Let's say if I'm buying Tesla at 500, so I can simply say, hey, I'm long Tesla. Basically, I'm buying Tesla. A margin call. So a margin call is the worst thing that you ever want to get. Uh, basically, that's when a broker calls you and says, hey, a broker says, hey. You know what, you need to put more money in, otherwise we're going to close your account and sell all your stocks. So basically when a broker or a bank demands an investor who is trading on margin deposits, additional funds or securities to bring the value of their account up to minimum maintenance margin required. This will happen when the value of the money borrowed on the margin decreases past a certain point determined by your broker or the bank. Um, I'm pretty sure uh, most of you guys do know Martical, but I had to go through it and it's something that you want to stay away from. Uh, there, we're going to talk more in detail about the margin call. Resistance. So a resistance, we call something is resistance if something has having trouble going up. So a price area or a level where the sellers have historically outweighed buyers. For example, let's say that the Tesla is going, uh, every time Tesla comes up to 500 level, Becomes, let's say it's at 450, it goes to 500, and then it goes down again. Then it goes up to 500, and then it goes down again to 450. Then it goes down again to 500, and again it goes on. So 500 level is a call resistance level. It's a resistance where the, where the so any price, any time a price or a stock price is having difficulty crossing that certain area, it's called resistance. Now the opposite of resistance is support. So like I said in this example, Tesla price is having uh, issue going to above 500, but then it goes to 500, it comes down to 450. So 450 would act as support. So anytime the price is having trouble going down from a particular value, that's the support. Okay, we're gonna talk detail about support and resistance as well in our technical analysis class. Then we have trend. So a trend is basically a general direction of the market. So if the prices just keeps going up and up and up for a few days, months, basically it's called a trend, it's an upward trend, okay? A trend could stay for short term for a few days, for, say for a few months, or it could stay for a very long term. So we can say, hey, the long term of the market is trending upwards. However, right now, the market is going down, so the short term is downward, but the overall long term is upward. Short or short selling. So, as you all know, you can make money when the stock goes up, right? But you can also make money when the stock goes down. All you do is just do the opposite. So when you are buying, you say, I'm long. But when you are sh like shorting, you say that you are short. If you think the price is going to go down, you can short the stock and make money. So shorting is basically selling borrowed shares in anticipation of a price decline. Traders who go short make money when the price declines rather than arises. The shares that are borrowed must be bought back and returned to the borrower at some point in future. So if the shares are bought back at a price lower than they were sold, the short seller makes a profit. Now, these are the lingos that we have, you know, uh, we talked about this. So now let's get into the types of trading styles. So now that we understand, so what are your type? What are the types of trading styles and what you want to be doing? It's up to you. It depends on your trading, but my job is to tell you all the trading styles that there is. Number one is scalping. So a scalping basically is a, a, day, a part of the day trading. Um, but normally in scalping, you are looking or a trader is looking to just make very, very quick gains. So 
they buy something at $5 and they sell it at $5 at 10 cents. So they make 10 cents profit, okay? Now in scalping, normally you cannot just make money with 10 cents. However, if you buy 10,000 shares and make 10 cents profit, that's a lot, that's over $1,000 profit, right? You see, but if you buy only 10 shares, you're gonna make 10 cents, right? So in scalping, you have to buy a lot of shares. I don't recommend, if you're a new person, I do not recommend scalping at all until you have experience. But scalping is something that lasts very, very few seconds. You, it goes up 10 cents, you take profit, and boom, you just made your money. Then it's another part is day trading, which is which goes from few minutes to few hours. Now scalping is also called a day trading, but the real day trading is something, you know, hey, you think the price is going to go up from $5 to six today, right? So you take that $1 move rather than just 10 cents, right? Two cents, three cents. You are taking a bigger move and that sometimes takes, you know, few minutes to uh, you know 10 minutes to 15 to an hour sometimes two three hours okay so that's called day trading uh, but in both cases you don't hold anything overnight so in scalping you buy and sell the same day and in day trading also you buy and sell the stock the same day then comes swing trading so swing trading is something that you buy and hold for a few days so let's say that hey you think Tesla um, is at $500, for example, and you think it's going to go to 700, you know, in maybe two, three weeks because it has some news catalyst coming up. So you buy for a few days, you buy a Tesla at 500, and then once it reaches your target, six, 700, whatever the target is, you sell it. Now in swing trading, you don't have to buy too many shares. So if you're a new trader, swing trading might be a good idea for you because in day trading and scalping, you need to buy a lot of shares to make it worth your time. However, in swing trading, you can buy small amount of shares. Let's say you just buy 10, sh 10 shares of Tesla, right, at 500 and you sell it at 600, that's over a thousand dollar profit just with 10 shares. But if you're scalping 10 sh uh, with just 10 shares and it goes up $2, let's say Tesla, you're gonna make 20 bucks. So it's, it's, you know, you have to buy a lot of shares in scalping, but in swing trading, that's a good advantage. So if you're something new, swing trading will be, I suggest, is the area to start. Then finally is the long-term investing. We're not going to be talking about uh, long-term investing in detail, but basically long-term investing, we all know Warren Buffett, right? Like you just buy and you hold for years. Uh, and this only works the best if you, uh, long-term investing is you buy, if you buy and hold in very sound companies. Like if you were holding Apple, if anybody's holding Apple, Netflix, holding, you know, uh, Microsoft, they're all making money. And the reason why is because these are always sound companies that they're going to go in uh, for a very long time. They're going to be profitable. All right. So let's talk about brokers now. What are the, if you're new and you don't know anything about brokers or what's, uh, you know, trading platform to use, I prefer or I suggest to all new traders is to use TDMA Trade. They have a software called Thinkorswim, which is very, very good and it's also free. So anybody, if you're, when why why are we talking about it? I want to talk about you know brokers, right? Like everybody wants to when they start, they want to just spend money on their courses. They want to spend money on the best platform. They want to buy the best gear. However, I suggest if you are starting new, if you have a small account, try to get as much free resources that are actually really good, and work hard because. If you spend money in commissions, commissions are free. Never ever, if you're paying commissions, stop it right now, okay? Because it's free. I mean, why would you pay commissions when you can use TD Ameritrade and everything is free from there and they offer the best uh, services out there. So I suggest TD Ameritrade. Now let's say if you're a scalper who wants ex so very, very quick executions, then interactive brokers will be the good one, good option for you. However, they do charge per trade execution fees. So, you know, if something that if you are trading with, you know, more than 10,000 shares, then you wanna use interactive brokers. Then we have people or Robinhood, pretty much all the newbies start with these, uh, and I don't suggest it, but if you do, I would only suggest for swing trading, not for day trading. If you are buying and selling the same day, uh, you are at a disadvantage because there are people who are using better brokers, better executions, um, and they're able to get in and out something very, very quick, or rather than you, you will not be able to day trade because day trade requires entering more precision and entering and executing 
on a trade very, very quick. So I do not recommend Weeble or Robin for day trading, okay? Only for swing trading, yeah, that's fine. Now, important trading rules. So now that we understand, you know, like the basics, you got the lingos, you understand, you know, the brokers and stuff like that. Now let's talk about the trading rules. So everybody has their own trading rules depending on their personality, right? For example, one of my trading rules is that every time I wake up in the morning, I, before trading, I have to have a breathing exercise. I do a breathing exercise. The reason why, because I get very, very agitated still even five years of trading, I still get very agitated when the market opens. So for that, I I sit for two to five minutes and I breathe heavily in and out and I meditate. And that helps me calm down. So that is mine. Maybe that's not your issue, so you don't have to do it. However, I do recommend doing it to everybody, but that's just my rule. However, there are some rules that are universal and that's what we're gonna be talking about. So the number one trading rule is that always, always have a plan when taking a trade. Man, it's so important. If you don't know, if you're entering into a trade, ask yourself, what is your stop loss? What are your targets? If you don't have this information, that is not, you do not have a sound plan and you will be emotional when taking a trade. So you must have a complete plan before entering a trade. Number two, stock market is always bigger than you. You never know anything and it's constant learning process. No matter how amazing you get, no matter how much money you make, there's always a chance that you might lose tomorrow because you don't know what the market is going to bring you tomorrow. If you don't follow your rules, if you don't stick to your risk management, if you don't stick to your strategies, no matter how amazing you trader you were yesterday, you can be completely worth zero the next day. And to understand that and to keep that in perspective, you always wanna to say to yourself, there's always something new that anything would happen in the market. All I can do is trade with what I know and then learn what the market gives me. That's very, very, very important. Third is I have a strategy and then stick to it. So when something starts working for you, right? Stick to it because market is always going to be changing around you, okay? It's very easy just from one thing to another, you know, options, equities, you know. When one thing sticks for you, stick to it. Don't change. And then refine that, okay? Like, for example, like, what if, like, Kobe Bryant, you know, once he scored, like, 50 points in a game, he goes, like, all right, you know what? I got it now. Let me just, like, you know, think, of, uh, learn baseball now because I'm good at it, right? No. I mean, he kept refining it. Now he went to like, then he went, okay, how can I make 60 points in the game? How can I make 70? How can I make 80 points? And he did it, right? So it's always making things better. Uh, once you get the hang of it, stick to it. Do not change. You've already done all the hard work. Now it's time to make money from it, right? Fourth is volume in the stock is very important. What does that mean? So a volume is the number of shares being traded that day on a particular stock, okay? The more shares traded means the more people are watching the stock. The more people watching the stock means the stock is going to move up or down depending on the price action or depending on the news or depending on the trend that day. It's going to more up and down. And when there's more volatility or there's more price movement, that's when you make the most money, right? Obviously. If, the st if Tesla, for example, goes from 500 to 600 in a day, there's way more opportunities to make money than Tesla goes from 500 to 502, right? Just that day. So that is determined by the volume. The more people are watching it, the more people are doing it, uh, trading that day, that's the particular stock, the better or more chances are there to win. That leads me to the next one is a price action is king and not anyone's opinion doesn't matter if you like uh let's say if you like iphone or not let's say you hate iphone okay let's say i hate iphone and it doesn't mean that the price of apple stock is going to go down just because i think that i don't like the product doesn't mean the price going down if the apple is going up if the stock price of apple is going up no matter how much i hate the stock it doesn't matter so you always look at the price action of the stock or wherever the stock is heading 
similarly the opposite if the price if you think oh my god i love this you know i love this stock i love the uh, what they do but the price keeps going down and down and down and down right there must be something that you don't know price action is price action means the where the price is going so if a stock is going down you don't want to buy at that moment you always want to look for a setup which we're going to talk about but price action is the king it doesn't matter what your opinion is whatever the price of the stock is doing that's what matters the most and it's very very important to keep your opinion and the price action of the market separate because then it's going to get very very hard all right six you can always be better tomorrow keep working and never ever settle let's say if you make a hundred dollars today does that mean that you could have not made 500 today let's say you make 500 does that mean that you could not have made thousand today yes you could have right always always push yourself once you get to the limit move your next limit to a little bit higher a little bit higher a little bit higher little do you know you're making hundred dollars a month then you're gonna be making ten thousand a month if you're making ten thousand a month you're gonna make 20k a month and goes on and on and on there's just sky is the limit there's just no limit and sky is the limit okay number seven risk what you're willing to lose so so important right this is the pinnacle of trading if you don't let's say if you get into a stock and if it goes down you don't know how much money you're going to lose you are doing it totally wrong how many times you buy something and then it starts to go down and you get caught off guard you're like oh my god i'm down i'm down i'm down what should i do right don't do that and we're going to talk about in the risk management class how to make sure that when you're entering into a trade you know exactly how much you're going to lose so that you're already prepared and you're not emotional and you're looking at the stock more rationally rather than emotionally all right that brings to the number seven is actually a continuation is that you must know your exit price because risk management is the key to success huh, so important um and basically if you let's say that you are day trading or you're swing trading and you bought tesla at 500 and swing trading tesla you think is going to go to 600 but what if it goes to 450 what if it goes to 400 what if it goes to 300 are you going to keep holding if you are swing trading or if you're day trading you must have a stop loss you must have a stop loss because it takes one trade to wipe out all your profits most likely the stock is going to go down and it's going to come back up but there will be one stock that is not going to come back up and you're going to keep holding 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 and it's going to take away all your profits it's going to take away all the hard work you did you make 10 amazing trades you work super hard and then one trade you let it slip it wiped out all your profits right so you must have an exit price if you don't you will not i promise you will not be successful long term yeah you will make money anybody can make money but it's about keeping it that's the most important part goes in the market the common trading mistakes you know uh, yeah yeah rules uh, basically you want to follow and there's something that you want to avoid at all cost right i mean if you don't do it you're not gonna give make it the common trading mistakes is give it time it took me two years just to make money after in the market for the two i mean i obviously have made money but my first two years were just constant learning problems i was making i was losing i was making i was losing okay and at the end of those two years my net gain was negative I was filing my in my tax returns a uh, loss and if I had not give it time I wouldn't be you wouldn't be listening to me right now if I had quit that day or if I had quit even if I had quit at the end of two years now I think that two years a little stretch um, if you know exactly you know if you have the right information right knowledge you know you work hard I think a year is enough uh, but I think I learned it through trial and error and it was a uh, tough uh, game for me so it took me a little longer but 
The point is that you must give it time. Be patient. Okay? You must be patient. Give it time. Second is risk management. It's so important. 90% of the traders, they leave the market within being first year into the market. Because what they do is that they don't understand risk management and they lose all their money before they even get a chance to learn. So risk management is the most important part. That leads me to set the, this is the continuation third point, which is, which is trading with a big account at the beginning. Oh my God, so important because at first when you're beginning, right, you have no idea, right? You have no idea and it's just because you just don't have the knowledge. You're smart, doesn't mean that you're stupid. But at the first, if you are trading with all your saved money or the money you have to all your trading account money, right? There's a very good chance that you will lose it all. So the key is to start small and you will expect that you are going to lose that money. Because now l let me just give you my, uh, my experience. I blew up three accounts of 3,000 each. So I lost 3,000, then I lost 3,000, then I lost 3,000. Then I was able to, and every time I kept losing, I kept getting better though. Like the first account took me, you know, two months to blow up. <laughs> then, then the second account actually took me like five months to blow up. Then the third account took me eight months to blow up. And then eventually I flat, started flatlining, you know, started not losing money and then started to make money. So imagine if I had started with a 25K. I would have lost 25k, then I would have started again with 25k, then lost again, then lost again. Now, the lessons that I learned losing 10k is the same lesson that I'm going to learn losing 100k. But 100k is going to lose a way bigger scar than a 10k because you can always make it all back, right? So, very important to start with a uh, trading account which is small, not big. Then, you know, we talked about this is the previous, uh, about the normal rules that we talked about is not have a stop loss and profit targets. If you don't have stop losses and profit targets, you're just never going to be able to consistently make money because sometimes you're gonna, it's gonna go up a lot. Sometimes, you know, the stock is gonna go up, you're not gonna take profits, you're gonna come back down and then you're gonna lose money. So you must have a plan, which you talked about that already. So I'm not gonna go into too much detail. Then is not reviewing your trades after you're done trading. So every time when you're done with the trading, you did trading day, you need to look at your trades and see what you did right, what you did wrong, and then make new rules on the basis of what you did wrong. So let's say that if you were trading in the morning, you know what, what the market opened, you're losing money, then you need to uh, revise and say, hey, you know what, I'm gonna wait for the market to open for first 10 minutes and then trade. So you, the only way you're gonna know is by reviewing your trades what your weaknesses are. Then a lot of traders average down. They think they know, right? We, I knew when I first started, after making like five great trades, I was like, I know what I'm doing. The fixed time the stock came, <laughs> comes down. I'm like, I know what I'm doing. Let me just buy some more shares. And then it came down more. Let me just buy, must buy some more shares. And it came down more. I averaged down, averaged down to my account to zero. Guys, do not average down, especially if you're a new trader, please. This is the most important. Out of all, take this if you want to take one not doing the pre-market game plan so this is for active traders you know if you are uh, trading actively every day the best this will keep you prepared is when the mark before the market opens you have your levels your support and resistance levels right down so that way you are already prepared when the stock comes to that level okay you don't trade you don't all just open the market and then start trading you need to know where the key levels are, where the stock typically going to bounce from. So you need to know this before, so when the stock does come back down, you're already prepared, okay? Then comes trading with emotions. Uh, I mean, this is a, going to be an ongoing battle for everyone. Anybody who's a trader uh, goes through with this, how to manage emotions every single day. And we're gonna go through a psychology class, but trading with, if you're emotional trading, stop that day. That's what I would say on this uh, segment right now. All right, so now that we uh, went through the mistakes, let's talk about all the, what all the successful traders do. What are their habits? What is causing them and what is separating them from other 90% of the people? So, successful traders, one of the biggest thing they do is that when they are right, 
they hold the winning trades longer and when they are wrong they cut it right away so just think about it you know a new trader when they i when i was a new trader i would buy something and then it goes down i would average down so i would hold the losing trade longer and then when something goes up i would just take profit and get out so every time my losers were bigger but my uh, winners were smaller all right so this is the opposite you want to do you want to hold your winning trade longer and cut your losing trades quicker realize a game of probabilities I've talked to so many amazing, great, big, big traders, and that's what all they talk about, and that's what I talk about too when my trading as well. That's what has really helped me. Is that hey, if if you're wrong, it's okay, just cut it. Because I have a proven strategy. I know what I'm doing. I have experience. I have had great trades before. If I just keep doing those and cutting my losses when I'm wrong and letting my winners go, I will be profitable doesn't matter what i do even if i'm right 50% of the time i will make money some traders only are right 30% of the time and make a lot of money it's because when they're right they make a lot of money when they're wrong they lose very small so it's a game of probabilities they think how much they're going to lose not win so important what does that mean so when i'm entering into a trade if i think it's a great great trade i am thinking okay you know what if it goes against me I'm going to lose this much. If I already know how much I'm going to because if I'm right, I'm going to make money. I know it. But when I'm wrong, am I okay to lose that money? If I'm okay, then I'll be very very emotionally stable and I won't let the winning trade run when it's in my favor. Okay? But if I get into a trade and if it goes against me and I was thinking I'm only going to risk $100, but I end up, you know, going down like 500 and I'll be panicking and I'll be like super emotional and i will not be able to trade properly even if it comes back down and it goes up again i will be super scared and i will be very keen to take my profits really really quick right so if you know how much you're making you're going to lose if you enter into a trade that will give you a lot of stress free and no less anxiety right they know each trade is different if you lost money in one trade it has nothing to do with the next trade you take it is completely independent of itself so that being said if you trade one time and you lose doesn't necessarily mean the next trade is going to be a loser or a winner it's separate when you are able to do that then you're able to think logically okay and that's something very very important next is they use as less indicators possible guys if you're using RSI and MACD tens to 10 moving averages you know crossover this that by the time it, it, it's extremely tough i don't use i hardly use anything i simply use couple of moving averages and that's it that's it some even if i take that out i don't need that too um and i have used all kinds of indicators and this is what my experience is okay before i used to have macd rsi i used to have moving averages in my chart And when I would see a great trading opportunity, I would look at the RSI. Uh, hmm, RSI looks good. I look at the MACD. Hmm, MACD looks good. I would look at the moving average. Hmm, looks good. And by the time I would make my decision, the trade is already gone, <laughs> right? Because you are looking at so many different indicators, and by the time you get you you're making a decision, right, the stock is gone. So the less indicators you use, the less. your mind gets fucked up and the better decisions you make i know it's uh, it's, it's counterproductive like you, you see it all the time uh, if people are doing so many indicators trust me you don't have to try it yourself and let me know all right they don't think if something is cheap or expensive if something is up trending for example we saw tesla went up to like over $2000 if you thought Tesla at thousand that it was very very expensive because it went from three hundred to a thousand, right? And if you thought it was very very expensive, you missed out a huge move from thousand to about two thousand, right? So what does that mean? That means is nothing is expensive as long it's up trending. You can always look to buy, and as long as not crashing is still a good price because a good price is determined by if 
there are more buyers willing to step up and buy it. That's it. It has nothing to do with a stock price being very high or very cheap. They understand emotions very, very well. So I, let me give you my experience, right? If I wake up in the morning and if I think, hey, I'm feeling sick, I know that I'm not going to be able to trade well because of my past experience. So I understand because when I was sick before, I did not do well. So before, because I was uh, reviewing all my trades and I know that, hey, you know, if I'm sick, I shouldn't trade. If I am not, uh, you know, if I'm not in my state of mind, complete state of mind, I shouldn't trade. Stuff like that. If I have something's going through, something going bad in my uh, trading, in my, you know, personal life, I shouldn't be trading. So all these emotions that come in, I need to be able to understand how I'm feeling. And then based on that, I decide if I want to trade that day or not trade the day, or if I want to reduce size or increase size. Similarly, if you're feeling very, very confident, right, then that's the day that you want to trade more right? Because you're feeling really, really good. So understanding how you feel and then trading on the basis of that, right? Understanding, uh, you know, you're going to come across FOMO, which is the fear of missing out. You're going to come across uh, over trading where you keep trading and trading and trading and don't stop. You're going to come across so many things. And each of those things are attached to a particular emotion. And you have to understand this emotion and then how to deal with it. That's something very, very important. We're going to go more, a little more detail into the psychology, psychology lessons course later. And we're going to talk about how to handle emotions. But good traders handle emotions very, very well, which is very, very important. They do not average down. So this is the goes to the point number one, where is that they hold the winning trades longer. But when they're wrong, they cut it or they cut, take the loss and move on instead of adding more and hoping that's going to go up. Very, very important. They work more outside the market than inside the market. We talked about earlier about the uh, rules of trading where we talked about pre-market, uh, you know, trading uh, or uh, doing the homework, right? They plan everything before the market opens and when the stock price does come to those price levels or it does act the way they thought it would then they execute their plan otherwise they don't so important right they always think that they don't know something and anything could happen so this is something that i had really tough struggle with because when i first started trading and I would learn something and I'd be like, I got it now. Next day I would go in the market and boom, I would lose money again. Then I'd be like, okay, I look, look at my mistakes, I, I fix it. And then, like, okay, now I got it. And then I would go again in the market and I would lose again. What I didn't realize was that every day in the market is a little different, okay? The basics are the same, but they're a little different. And what happened yesterday doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to happen tomorrow. It will repeat. It will definitely repeat that sometime in the future, but it doesn't mean it's going to repeat the next day. So anything would happen, you have to be nimble in the market. You have to be open-minded in the market. And that's what it means. They always think that they don't know something and anything would happen. So that's why they're always prepared if something goes south. Then lastly, they track their records and they work on their weaknesses. So nobody is going to be perfect. Uh, there's always a room for more growth. And I'm always, always looking to get better and always looking to see what I can do to take my trading to the next level. Um, and that's what you have to do because there is no other way to be successful. You can, it's, it's the hardest thing you're ever going to do. And if you have passion, if you are willing to put the work, that's the only way you're going to be successful. And that's all the traders have been through. No trader has ever said, hey, it was easy. All right, so they always track their records and they always work on their weakness. All right, guys, so this is the end of the foundation course. I hope you learned something. Next thing we're going to be diving into is technical analysis. So it's going to be more fun and it's going to be more interesting. Uh, and I think that's what you guys are here for. So let's, I'll see you guys in the next chapter.